Okay, Catholic of Rome. Um, it wasn't exactly a discrete list of questions you had. It was more like a uh, three-paragraph essay, and I had to pick the questions out. Um, you might increase the number of responses you get if you uh, list the questions out more systematically, like one, two, three in a list. Um, I find it also helps to list them in the description so that you know people can watch the video and then when they want to go back all they have to do is read the description to come up with their answers. Anyway, um, question number one, where does our soul come from? Um, this of course assumes that we in fact have souls. Um, no objective evidence for the existence of our souls has yet come about, so I am inclined to assume that we do not have souls, and that our consciousness is a result of our the functions of our brains. Uh, question number two, where did matter come from? This is a question that belongs in the realm of physics. Um, you're right. Uh, science as yet does not have a sufficient answer for this, but uh, more is learned every day. Um, the first couple of fractions of a second after the, the Big Bang is still a confusion. Um, it's hard to do the math to resolve exactly what's going on. All of the fundamental forces were apparently unified into one. And of course the distinction between energy and matter hadn't been made yet. This is a bunch of stuff that's way over my head. But uh, that doesn't mean that it is beyond the realm of science. Um, and I think eventually we will come to a, a reasonable answer to that. But, you know, this isn't a question for anybody of a religious or non-religious uh, point of view. This is this is strictly a scientific question. Specifically, this belongs in the realm of physics. Uh, and question number three, where is the distinction between life and non-life? Um, that has not yet been discovered. I don't think we've got an example of, oh look, at this level of complication, this thing is clearly not alive, and at this level of complication, it is clearly alive, and here's the point at which you cross in complexity from non-life to life. That has not been uh, discovered yet. But, as far as realm of science, that would be organic chemistry. Organic simply mean, meaning uh, carbon-based. Anything with carbon in it is organic. So even something as simple as methane with uh, two atoms of carbon surrounded by hydrogen, that is still an organic compound. It's quite simple, but it's still organic. So um, actually, th there's a bit of an argument right now between uh, uh, about whether viruses are alive or not. They are fairly complex organic compounds, but they behave almost like poisons instead of things that are alive. Um, there's a debate going on about whether viruses are actually alive or not. They are right there on the line between non-life and life, as far as I'm concerned. And the distinction between non-life and life is, is almost arbitrary. It's like, I know it when I see it, sort of thing. But yeah, the, this, uh, this belongs to uh, chemistry, specifically organic chemistry. That's where the, the, the answer shall be found. Um, and then you also say that does the arise of life require a supernatural event? I don't think so. Um, I think given the right conditions and uh, the right amount of energy in our planet, uh, the energy is ultimately provided by the sun, which is a gravity-powered fusion reactor. So uh, it's basically the laws of physics at work that uh, bring life about. I suspect it's probably fairly common in the universe, uh, non-intelligent life anyway. I'm not sure how in, uh, how common intelligent life is, considering the very specific 
uh, evolutionary process with uh, mass extinction events that our planet has gone through for to enable us to come about um, I'm not sure how how rare that is in the universe nobody really does I think it might it might be fairly rare it might make us rather special but I, I might be totally wrong and, and intelligent life given enough time could be very common throughout the universe I don't know but um, does the, the, the creation of life require a supernatural event? No, I don't think so. There doesn't appear to be any, any uh, you know, hand of God moments that need to come about. It, it just follows the rules of organic chemistry about how carbon likes to bond with other things to make more complex things in chains and how the chains break off and start you know, replicating themselves. It doesn't require anything supernatural. This is all perfectly natural stuff. Um, the jump to the jump to supernatural, I think, just comes from a lack of understanding about the actual physical processes that are involved. But anyway, um, look to organic chemistry to find out what the origins of life actually are. I don't think they um, even religious uh, texts actually explain this well enough. I think the, the the real answer is going to be a lot more interesting.